All right, boys, welcome to another session of Lounge Room Chemistry. Today we're going to talk about the electrochemical series and how to predict what reactions will happen and what reactions won't happen using this. Um, I like to call this theory the Miss Thomas theory of the bicycle, and that's because I hate bicycles and I'm lazy. Um, generally, if I'm on a bicycle at the top of a hill and I'm just going downhill, I'm good. Weehee! No energy required, no effort. That's spontaneous. That bike's just going to push me all the way down to the bottom and I don't have to do a thing. That's good, right? This is the fundamental basis of what we call a galvanic cells, right? The electricity comes out. We don't have to force them. That is like, woohoo, rock and roll. However, if I'm sitting down here at the bottom of a big hill, I look up and I'm on a bike, I'm like, yeah, that's not happening. Not a chance in hell am I riding a bicycle up a hill. Just not happening. Too much energy. I'm too lazy. As my boxing coach would say, I am the world champion of relaxing during an actual exercise class. So sitting here, looking at going up, that's not going to happen. The only way that that's going to happen is if you physically connect me to a truck and that truck pulls me up the hill, right? This is the basis of our electrolysis, right? These reactions will not go on their own unless you have something forcing the reaction to happen. And in that case, the thing that's forcing this reaction to happen is electricity, right? We're going to put electricity in to get that to go. When this situation is happening, electricity is going to come out, right? Produces electricity, right? Just like energy of me going down on the bike, I'm going to make some electricity. So if that's the situation, we're going to look at our electrochemical series. This is ranked in order from positive to negative, and they are always reduction half equations to start with, right? So let's say I have got a question here from the textbook that says, using the electrochemical series, predict whether a reaction will occur in the following situations. Chlorine gas is bubbled into a solution containing bromide ions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find chlorine gas. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to find bromide ions, which are on this side. They need to be on opposite sides of the arrow if they're going to work. And if I look at where they are in respect to each other on the table, we are going down the hill. So this will work. Chlorine gas will react with bromide ions. Um, if I, however, try and put bromine into a solution of chloride ions, let's have a look at whether that will work. I've got bromine over here and I've got chloride ions over here. Hmm. Here we are at the start. We've got to go up the hill to get there. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Not at all. Not happening. Nope. So this reaction does not happen. That's a big fat no for that reaction, right? Whereas chloride gas and bromide ions down the hill, that's a big fat yes for that reaction. So the key thing to remember is you need to figure out what's in your solutions and then figure out whether it's going down the hill. And if it's going down the hill, then we have liftoff and galvanic cell and we are going to produce some electricity. A spontaneous reaction will happen. Um, let's have a look at maybe another one. If I have iron 2 plus reacting with hydrogen ions. I'm going to give you some time to think about this. Do, 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 do pause if you want. Right, let's have a look. 
iron 2 plus is on the table in two places. We've got iron 2 plus here and we've got iron 2 plus here. What you're then going to want to do is go and find all the other places where you've got hydrogen ions. On this table, we've only got one. And that's in this place here, right? I have hydrogen ions. I cannot react two things on the same side together. But I can react two things the opposite. And if I'm looking at this, we are going up the hill so that is not going to happen. Yeah? Does that make sense? Cool. Now, the reason why this whole up the hill, down hill phenomena works is because of this particular equation, which I'm going to write up over here, right? Your E naught is equal to the E of the reduction half equation minus the E of the oxidation half equation, right? So if I'm looking at my overall cell and I'm doing this for chlorine gas and bromine, this is the reduction half equation, right? Because this reacts with this, so the reactions go this way. So this is going to react to form this. That's our reduction half equation. So it's going to be plus 1.36 minus our oxidation, because remember, this will go backwards. This goes to bromine and electrons. That's oxidation. So it will be minus... 1.09 and that's a positive 1.09 so when we do this particular math oh math that's not good i find that the answer is going to be positive 0 0.27 volts as a unit because my answer is positive that is going to be spontaneous hurrah yay down the hill this is not going to happen, though, if I've got bromine trying to react. This would become my reduction half equation, right? So E naught equals E reduction minus E of the oxidation. That is going to become plus 1.09 minus plus 1.36, right? Because this would be the thing that would have to be oxidized to become chlorine gas. So this would have to be the oxidation equation and this would have to be the reduction equation. And if we put those in, we find that the value that comes out is minus 0 0.27 volts. And if you have that little minus thing there, that is not happening that is non-spontaneous, right? Um, cool. So that's the mathematical explanation as to why that this happens. That when you're doing your predictions, I want you to always think, am I going uphill or am I going downhill? Because that is going to help you a million times over predict whether or not things are going to happen in your electrochemical cell.